Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be building this small diorama featuring this RAF Sea King helicopter from Airfix. This is one of Airfix's starter sets. Um, mine did include the paintbrush and the paint, but I, I took them off before I filmed this. And I'd been after this kit for a while when I happened to see it in a local hobby shop and I thought I would snap it up. So it's a fairly standard Airfix box. In this case we only have one marking scheme and that's the uh, 70 years of life saving scheme. Like all Airfix kits, all of the sprues came in a single bag and uh, like a lot of the kits I've had, there were loose parts in the bottom of those bags that had broken off in transit. Luckily I think everything was still there and nothing was actually damaged, uh, but that's not always the case. Clear parts do get their own separate bag however, and of course there are quite a few clear parts on this. So if we quickly look through the contents of the box, I believe this is a fairly modern tooling around 2015, and certainly it shows it looks a decent quality. We've got some nice options here such as the ability to have the rotor blades folded away or uh, in uh, use, a couple of different tail rotor options, and of course the fuselage halves themselves. I believe that earlier versions of this kit did include a crew, but for some reason Airfix have removed it since then. So I bought this uh, resin helicopter crew from PJE Productions with these four figures here. Airfix's fairly standard instructions are included. They've got the nice addition of the colour highlighting for any uh, relevant parts which are added or changed. The build sequence is as you might expect, so obviously there's some kind of interior in this helicopter, and then we move on to the fuselage halves going together and then the exterior components. We do have a couple of nice options so this door here on the side for example can either be closed like this or it can be extended downwards for the access steps so that's quite a nice inclusion. The decal guide is on the back of the box. I started by adding the floor into one of the fuselage halves one of the first things I noticed was these large sink marks, ejector pin marks, on the inside of the fuselage. Even though it's quite dark inside, they do need to go because they are visible otherwise through the windows. But the good news is that some of them are covered up by the addition of later parts. The interior is largely one single colour and therefore I decided to build it up before adding any paint. This is one example of a part that was broken in the bag from the sprues rubbing together. I don't know where the other part of that went, I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to look like to be honest. The cockpit needs to be built up carefully because you need to add the seats and the pilots before you add the front console. Airfix do several variants of this aircraft and therefore you do need to make some modifications to these seats for this search and rescue version. You can also see that the seats have eject pin marks on the back and at least one of those is visible through the window so that needs to be sanded away or filled as well. This is another example of some inbox damage that occurred from the sprues rubbing together in the bag. Uh, both of these seats which go the rear of the fuselage had one leg missing. I tried to position them so it was less obvious. At this point I put this um, sort of false ceiling in here and then gave the interior a coat of grey paint according to the instructions. At this point I went to the RAF Museum in London and I was very lucky that they have a Sea King there and I got some great reference photos of it. So we can see in the interior here, there's a bit more detail obviously than the Airfix model includes but those blue seats are something that stand out. And even with a bit of reflection we can see that, uh, that uh, stretcher or cot, whatever you want to call it, on the, uh, on the ceiling. Plus we have the seats at the rear there with those orange cushions on them. 
and in the uh, bottom left corner that bag near the door is clearly wrapped in some kind of waterproof yellow um, cover. With that in mind I tried to add some extra colour to the interior. Unfortunately I'd already glued these parts in place so I couldn't airbrush them. I did my best to brush paint them. Tamiya acrylics are not the best for brush painting but uh, a coat over the top of this did improve the way things looked. And the same for the seats. For the stretcher I painted it all in red and then picked out those aluminium bars later on. After a semi-gloss coat of TS79 I used some sepia oil paint, thinned with white spirit, to make a pin wash. That highlights the detail there on the floor quite nicely. The rotor blades were next and the interconnect well. You have options, as I said earlier, for uh, folded away rotor blades too. On my recent Lancaster, which I haven't made a video of yet, I had some problems getting the glass parts to stay in place. So I decided in this case to use a small amount of super glue. PVA glue just isn't strong enough. Of course if they fall out it's hard to get them back in once the fuselage is closed up. So I used a tiny amount of super glue in the corner after testing to make sure it wouldn't fog the clear parts. This helicopter was going to be in a small diorama so I needed a clear acrylic rod to hold it up. I considered a few options. The most obvious one would be in the middle of the fuselage like so. But then I figured that would probably get in the way of the winchman. Certainly in terms of looking at the diorama or in photos. So I ultimately decided on a hole in the bottom of the aircraft with the acrylic rod here behind this rear bulkhead. And that has the added advantage of a larger surface area to attach the acrylic rod to, so it should increase the strength. To enable that to fit, I drilled a hole in the bottom panel of the helicopter. The windows were masked using some humbrol maskol. I haven't used that before, but it's a kind of a uh, rubber-like substance that you put on the windows, sort of uh, encourage it towards the edges using a uh, cocktail stick or similar. When it's dry, it's a rubber-like substance that provides a nice little masking material there. Although I was going to mask the windows, I decided to paint some yellow around their frames before I put the glass into place. And hopefully that would mean I wouldn't need to concentrate too much paint in that area, potentially uh, getting around the mask when I did the overall painting. There were a few fit issues such as here at the front where there's a slight step between this uh, engine piece here and the top of the helicopter. When I first came across these arms which attach the, um, the wheels I wondered why there was a gap between the fuselage and the arm. However, if we look on the box art, the gap is clearly there. And of course, looking at my reference images from uh, the RAF Museum, the gap's there as well. Uh, the, the front box art on the, of the Airfix kit doesn't show that gap, but it is supposed to be there. For the wheels, you have the option of having them uh, retracted or extended. I went for the wheels extended. Um, I know that if the aircraft is hovering they probably shouldn't be extended, but I have seen photos of the Sea King with those wheels extended even when it was presumably either performing a rescue or a, a training operation. So there are at least some times when it's, uh, when it's hovering and the wheels are down. Although the wheels are painted a different colour to the rest of the aircraft, they have to really be fitted now. And basically you have to just accept that you're going to have to go back and repaint them. So looking at the PGA Productions crew, two pilots are very easy identifiable. I wasn't quite sure at first which figure was the winch operator and which person was the person being lowered on the winch. But I believe it's this third figure here who is lowered and the figure in the blue on the far right is the winch operator. That's how I'm building them anyway. 
there were some definite gaps during the build and they were filled with some AK putty. They painted up nicely, some green for the two pilot and some nice bright orange for the other two figures. Again, there are lots of great references out there for these. After painting the clear parts black, I removed the mask all, and I think I did a pretty good job of keeping things clean. The great thing is that the, uh, the windows here have a slight ridge around them, allowing the mask all to flow exactly to the right position. And I think that's better than I could do if I was hand painting those uh, those lines. Yellow of course is a notoriously difficult colour to paint so I didn't want to put any kind of uh, pre-shading or even a dark grey primer down. It took me three or four coats over three or four days but I feel like I got a good consistent coat in the end. In terms of the decals we do have some quite large black decals here. I figured those larger ones could be masked off fairly easily so that's what I did just creating the mask shape using some Tamiya masking tape. After a coat of Tamiya TS13 gloss, I applied the decals. They went down nicely with a bit of Tamiya Mark Fit. However, later on I did notice that the mark fit seemed to have marked the uh, gloss varnish for some reason. I'd never seen this before, but you can see these lighter patches of orange here. It's strange how two Tamiya products might react like that. The red and white decals for the tail rotor probably should have been masked and painted. The grills above the cockpit glass are represented with decals. There was a small issue here with the side door not quite fitting and needing a small bit of trimming to the top and the side. To be honest I'm not quite sure why I left that so long to fit it, I should have fitted it during the earlier construction stages. There were a couple of hand painted details and this includes the clear colours used on the lights which are not detailed on the airfix instructions but are visible in the reference photos. The next step was to take a mix of sepia oil paint and some white spirit, make a pin wash and apply it to the panel lines. You can see how nicely it runs along those panel lines there. And again, those reference images show quite a dirty surface. So even this is cleaner than the real surface. As always with a pin wash you can clean up excess with a brush dampened in white spirit. Time to remove the final mask hole from the side windows. I fitted the cockpit glass using PVA glue. For the winchman I used this uh, Lycra rigging to suspend in below the aircraft. This worked perfectly well until I tried to film it. 
Moving on to the diorama base, I found these great deep box frames in Hobbycraft and they were half price when I bought them, so I bought a number of different sizes. Not only are these deep frames great for giving an impression of depth to the water, but if we flip them over and remove the backing, we can see we get a sheet of glass, but we also get this inner frame here, which is holding the glass in place. And I think that would make a nice diorama frame on its own. So I took that out and put it to the side and considered myself lucky to get the frame for half price and then essentially two frames for the price of one. I put the back of the picture frame back into place and closed those metal tabs to keep it uh, inside the frame. Then I slipped some leftover XPS foam inside. To secure everything in place I ran a bead of hot glue around the underside of the frame. One of the main reasons I included the foam here is because I wanted to have enough thickness to hold the end of that acrylic rod. So if I just had the wooden back of the base, it wouldn't particularly hold it in a stable manner. The water effects were made using tissue paper. In this case I didn't want particularly large rolling waves in the water, but I did want some uh, downwash from the helicopter. I started by marking a point where I wanted the helicopter to be hovering and the waves would uh, radiate out in concentric circles from here. I started by covering the foam in a 50-50 mix of PVA glue and water, put down the first layer of kitchen paper, apply glue over the top and you can see there's a pattern in the kitchen paper but it soon disappears. At this stage I was trying to build up the layers simply to get a less flat uniform surface. As I moved on through the layers, so here you can see for example the purple foam is no longer visible, then I started to try to make the waves in those concentric circles. If I wanted any particularly large waves, I took some small sausages of tissue paper, rolled them up, put them on the surface, and then laid the subsequent layers of tissue paper over the top. And that helped give that kind of wave effect. It's really just a case of building up the layers. There's no harming adding more layers until you get the effect that you want. Once that's done, it needs to dry for a good few days. Remember, you've put quite a lot of water into that with the uh, PVA glue, so it's best to make sure it is properly dry before you continue. Now, white is generally the best color to start with when it comes to painting these waves. However, it's hard to paint white paint over white tissue. So I gave everything a coat of XF17, which is uh, to me a sea blue, or sea green rather. I then went over the raised areas with some white. I haven't thinned this particularly well, but it's okay. This is the first layer of many. I then used this Liquitex gloss gel. This dries completely clear. I put it all over the surface of the water. The brush strokes here were deliberate and I tried to keep them coming away from that um, sort of oval where the helicopter will be hovering. As you can see the next day that gel has dried completely clear 
And then the water is really just a process of um, adding more paint, adding more gloss layers and so on, until you've got a look that you like. So on top of this quite stark contrast here between the sea green and the white, I added a mix of sea green and white, um, thinned down just over those edges there to try to give a, uh, a third tone there. Then I added another gloss layer. To try to get some nice water effects on this gloss gel, I used my airbrush with no paint, just air, to um, blow that gel into patterns away from that oval area. Of course, the gel does go clear. Once that was dry, I used a small amount of clear green on certain areas of the waves, really trying to, again, to feather that boundary between the white and the lightened uh, sea green. Once that had dried, I applied some more gloss gel just in spots on the wave caps. Then when that had dried, a small amount of white acrylic paint also on the peaks of the waves. With that done, the last job was to drill a small hole in the base for the acrylic rod, put the helicopter into place, and then look at the final result. Okay guys, that was my build of the Airfix 172nd scale Sea King with that crew from PJ Productions. To be honest, I struggled a bit to photograph this kit. It's a slightly odd shape, but I hope you enjoyed the photos anyway. I had great fun making this kit. It was a nice change of pace, something a bit different. I'd never built a helicopter before, but I think after building this, I'd definitely consider building another one. I do of course still have the Dora on my desk. Well, not on my desk, because it's far too big to fit on my desk. But I, uh, I do have it uh, next to my desk, and I have made some progress on it. So my next video will be an update to that. And of course, I have a few other bits and pieces uh, ready to be edited and uploaded as well. So guys, all that remains is for me to say thank you very much to all of you for watching. And a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. I try to share work in progress updates several times a week with my Patreon supporters and it's always great to hear their feedback and suggestions and discuss various techniques and so on. So thank you very much guys, your support is massively, massively appreciated. And thank you to everyone for watching the video, thank you for clicking like if you have done um, and thank you for all your comments, I do try to respond to all of them. So until next time, have fun modelling guys and I'll see you in the next video.